Om Shanti. Today is the 5th of October 2022. Let us listen to the Sakar Murli on this Wednesday morning from our beloved Bab Dada. Bab Dada Madhuvan. Essence. Sweet children, at this time your lives are like a diamond because you have become the children of God. God himself is teaching you. You are becoming far sighted and those with broad intellects. Essence once again, sweet children, at this time your lives are like a diamond because you have become the children of God. God himself is teaching you. You are becoming far sighted and those with broad intellects. Today's question is by making which effort are you children becoming far sighted? Dura deshi and those with broad intellects. In answer Baba says by having resemblance of the father you become far sighted and by studying you become those with broad intellects. To be far sighted means to remember the father who lives in the far away land. The meaning of man bana bhav is to be far sighted. To have a broad intellect means that your intellect has the knowledge of the beginning, the middle and the end of the world. You first have to be far sighted and then those with broad intellects. Today's song is Our pilgrimage is unique. Om Shanti. You children heard the song of how our pilgrimage is unique. Our pilgrimage is very far away and this is why you children are told may you be far sighted the resident of the far away land then says may you have broad intellects everyone's intellect is degraded at this time maya has made your intellects degraded so the intellects of you children are far sighted that is you have remembrance of the one who resides far away to have a broad intellect means that your intellect has the knowledge of the beginning the middle and the end all others have narrow intellects that is they simply speak of god they don't know him here there are no souls the father comes and makes you far sighted but children are not that far sighted although they have a lot of knowledge they are not that far sighted that is they stay in remembrance of the father very little sages make spiritual endeavor kings queens and all the people of the whole world are impure at this time although they have given the title mahatma or a great soul no one is a great soul some say that krishna is a great soul that at least is right because that is an elevated world this is the corrupt world as are the king and queen so are the people however at this time there are no kings it is the rule of people over people the father says you cannot meet me by studying the scriptures nor can you go into liberation until you come to know me from me at the end of the cycle when i come people remember krishna but he belongs to this land he is not far sighted therefore to remember the father means to be far sighted the meaning of man manabhav is to be far sighted if you don't know the father how can you receive inheritance from him if he doesn't come how can you find the path this is something to be understood there has to be deep love for the bridegroom it is said in a song having just found you I found everything therefore you receive all attainment from just the one there has to be a lot of love for such a bridegroom this knowledge is unlimited it is a variety drama in which there are all types of conflict and this is why they speak of the divided kingdom divided dwait or devils daitya it is the same thing call it either divided or devils that is dwait or daitya it is the same thing says baba ravan is said to be the devil it is only the one father who makes you into deities it is said he changes human beings into deities it is such a simple thing you have broad intellects 
those who study the scriptures are not said to have broad intellects that is devotion knowledge is a separate thing from devotion only the father the ocean of knowledge gives you knowledge you were like diamonds and have now become like shells the father is now making you like diamonds once again when you have broad intellects you rule the world there the kingdom is unshakable and stable so those in knowledge have broad intellects you know that there was happiness in the golden age and that you then gradually came down the ladder in order to climb up you take a jump in a second it is a leap of becoming pure from impure it takes 5000 years to come down you have all become those with broad intellects number wise according to the efforts you make you are given this knowledge at this time this knowledge doesn't exist in the golden age you would not say that your life is like a diamond in the golden age it is at this time that you have lives like a diamond because you are the children of god god is teaching you this is the father's praise since the supreme soul is the purifier how could he be omnipresent however human beings have narrow intellects no matter how much you explain to them they don't understand therefore you have to understand that they don't belong to the brahmin clan those who belong to the deity clan will understand knowledge and become brahmins the father is the ocean of knowledge you too become oceans of knowledge and you then become oceans of peace and happiness there is limitless happiness in the golden age so you receive the attainment of all types of happiness from the father at the end you will become oceans of knowledge happiness and peace because you also give this to others look how much sorrow and peacelessness there is at this time important people are unable to sleep you should now remain happy because you now know the father the world says o oh god the father supreme father supreme soul but they don't know him devotees have been doing devotion for such a long time they have been continually remembering him but they don't know anything the father himself comes and gives you the introduction of himself and his creation you then have to give that to others you know that he is the father he is not a mahatma baba thought about making you write on the form whom have you come to meet they would say we have come to meet the mahatma tell them he is not a mahatma there is the name brahma kumars and kumaris and so their father would be prajapita brahma would he not so how can he be a mahatma those who argue with others in this way have to be very good they need to have that wisdom some even write something but they don't understand anything they are complete buddhus you can tell from their faces that they don't have any knowledge shu baba knows everything he is antaryami that is the one who knows everything within you this baba that is brahma is bahariyami that is one who knows everything externally the father says i enter this body of the one who was number 1 he is now in the last birth i enter him because he has to become that same narayan again so because he lends me his body he receives rent and that is why they say the most fortunate chariot bhagirath that is the lucky chariot did not bring the ganges of water these are deep aspects of knowledge which people don't understand because they follow the dictates of ravan you have now understood therefore create ways of explaining to others you should think about how to make others far sighted and how to give them the father's introduction they remember the brahma element brahm is the element where god resides but those people consider the brahm element to be god that is they have considered the element itself to be god hinduism is not a religion because those people live in hindustan they have given the name hindu to their religion in fact hindustan is their place of residence similarly the element of brahm 
is the place where god resides however because people have narrow intellects they don't understand anything here it is a matter of knowledge everyone knows the things of the world very well this one was a jeweler that is brahma baba and he knew all about that but in terms of knowledge he had a narrow and degraded intellect he didn't know anything so baba has to come and give recognition until someone becomes a brahmin he cannot claim his inheritance from the father subjects also have to be created anyone who hears even a little knowledge will become part of the subjects if some continue to indulge in vice they will have to experience punishment they will then become ordinary subjects there is now to be death for everyone everyone is to be buried in the graveyard this has to become a graveyard at this time human beings have no value you too didn't have any value you are now becoming valuable but you will all die like insects when destruction takes place at diwali time so many insects die baba says at diwali time so many insects die everyone has to die because everyone has to return home in the golden age you won't say that someone has died because there is no untimely death there you will have conquered death there there you don't use the word death in the golden age you know that you don't die you simply shed an old costume at the right time and take another new one there is the example of the snake and how it sheds its old skin and takes a new one therefore that example of the snake applies to the golden age not here the example of the buzzing moth applies now even sanyasis give these examples because memorials of the present time continue on the path of devotion the more you children imbibe at this time the broader your intellects will become and you will earn accordingly similarly when a surgeon has a broad intellect the more medicines etc he has in his intellect and the more he earns it is the same here some earn 250 rupees and some earn thousands if someone cures a king he receives hundreds of thousands it is the same here some haven't imbibed any points of knowledge whereas others are very far sighted and have broad intellects and so they make others the same first you become far sighted and then you have a broad intellect this is something to be understood there is no one as fortunate as brahmins they take everyone to the very top at the top is god and so they give his introduction therefore you now know everything children would know everything from their father children would know everything about their father the father from beyond has now come to purify you and take you back there is a story about a farmer's daughter a king married a farmer's daughter but she didn't like it in the palace and so he sent her back home it is the same here those whose intellects are unable to imbibe knowledge leave of their own accord what can the father do about that it is only the supreme father the supreme soul who can explain to you he tells you the essence of the vedas and scriptures through brahma he says the vedas are not scriptures of any religion they are just leaves the children There are only four main religions and the Brahman religion is one of the main ones. Deities are not said to have lives like a diamond because it is this age that is the beneficial charitable age. The leap month is said to be the month of charity. It is this confluence age that is beneficial. There isn't benefit in any of the other ages because your degrees continue to decrease day by day. your degrees continue to reduce only at this age is the beneficial age each of you has to beat your head about how to explain to others in fact the master is showing you how to show the path to others but then each one's business is his own so you should be concerned as to how you can remove others from the quicksand some go to remove others from the quicksand and they become trapped themselves therefore you need many good clever methods with which you can explain to others first of all explain about alpha and then 
they can know about beta the sovereignty and also the world cycle first of all at least know alpha when someone sits and writes down a thousand times who alpha is he can then sit here some even write it with their blood and then they leave maya is no less acha to the sweetest beloved long lost and now found children love remembrance and good morning from the mother the father bap dada the spiritual father says namaste to the spiritual children and we the spiritual children say namaste to our spiritual father today's essence for dharna has two points first point become far sighted and stay in remembrance of the father and give others the introduction of the father who lives in the far away land second point create clever methods with which you can benefit everyone in the beneficial age do the service of removing everyone from the quicksand today's blessing may you be a karma yogi and constantly experience the flying stage with your wings of zeal and enthusiasm let's hear the blessing once again may you be a karma yogi and constantly experience the flying stage with your wings of zeal and enthusiasm baba explains zeal and enthusiasm are the wings of you brahmins for the flying stage even if you come down to do some work it is in the flying stage and as a karma yogi that you come down zeal and enthusiasm are very great powers for brahmins your lives are not dry but you have the sweetness of zeal and enthusiasm and so you can never become disheartened but remain constantly happy hearted zeal and enthusiasm makes storms into a gift and enable you to experience tests and problems as entertainment finally the slogan for today those who practice the bodiless stage cannot be attracted by any bodily attractions slogan once again those who practice the bodiless stage cannot be attracted by any bodily attractions cha om shanti today on dashahara we also have the invaluable versions of mateshwari ji what is the first point that we human souls have to keep in our intellects and to which we have to pay a lot of attention asks mateshwari ji there are a total of 7 points we will go over them one by one first we have to have the firm faith of who it is that is teaching us second all of us are human souls and the supreme soul is our father we souls his children are separate from the supreme soul our father third point god is not infinite god is not omnipresent we have to keep this knowledge in our intellects and this is why our knowledge is unique although people of the world think that they have god's knowledge when you ask them what knowledge it is that they have they say that god is omnipresent now god himself says my knowledge is only received from me just as you learn to be a barrister from a barrister and you learn to be a doctor from a doctor there are many barristers and if you don't study with one you can study with another if one doctor doesn't teach you then another doctor will teach you however this godly knowledge cannot be taught by any human whether he is a sage a saint or a great soul it can only be taught by the supreme soul himself so how can they think that they have god's knowledge fourth point god does not come here in every age but god comes once every cycle once in every cycle at the confluence age that is at the confluence of the end of the iron age and the beginning of the golden age he destroys all the irreligiousness and establishes the one original eternal religion of truth how can people say that god comes in every age they also say that the god of the gita is sri krishna and that he comes in the copper age all of these things have to be proved the god of the gita is not sri krishna it is shiva the supreme soul and he does not come in the copper age he comes at the time of the confluence fifth point how was there 
extreme darkness without the guru who is that guru how is the human world an inverted tree and how we can conquer our five vices these have to be kept in mind sixth we are those pandav warriors we have god himself with us and have victory seventh point god himself is the almighty authority and so those who have taken the full company of god receive the two crowns of light and might to keep all of these things in your intellects is called knowledge acha om shanti